Yes, yesterday we worked a little bit on focus and directrix of parabolas. We're going to work more with them today, develop the topic, try to have some hands-on applications, and we'll do a little bit more practice the next time we meet. But I'd like to start with an opening question here. So we've got a telescope lens is 12 centimeters in diameter and 2 centimeters in concavity. We want to determine the equation which models its curvature to produce clear images. So what shape is a telescope lens? Circular. And then it's a 3D, right, because it's a concave dish. So start by drawing a cross section and let's see if we can recognize the shape from anything we've used previously. Let's see, he's got a good-looking cross-section. All right, so that's a good outline. I like yours. Can you label any parts of it? I like the shape of yours, too. Looking good. Would you like to put yours on board? Yeah, that looks good. You've obviously worked with the telescope. <laughs> Go, Evan. Excellent. And then can you go ahead and label the, the information that we have in our problem? Where would you put your 12? Where would you put your 2? Excellent. Are there any questions so far? All right. So what does the shape remind you of that you can get an equation for? Could look like a parabola, could also look anything else curvy, like half a circle, maybe? Half a circle, do you think? You don't think half a circle? I think Why? part of a circle, that doesn't really look like half a circle. I'm sorry, what? That doesn't really look like half a circle. Why not? I think it might be a part of a circle. Because it doesn't go in enough, it's like too shallow. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 All right, well, and then someone said, what else? Looks like maybe it's part of an ellipse. So there are a lot of curvy things that could fit our situation. We're going to examine, that's the question, which model best fits this picture? So we're going to talk about that today. So we've had circles already. What is What information for a circle, thank you, Evan. What information from a circle might fit this curve? What do you need to get the equation of the circle? Radius. All right. So we need a radius. If we were going to complete the picture and draw it further around, the radius would not only come here, but the radius might come to the end of our lens as well. All right. So if this part was R for radius, and we had another R here, how much would we label up above our telescope lens? R minus 2. R minus 2, all right. So we have R minus 2, we have 2 down below. How much going across? How much going across to complete our triangle that we see? 6. All right. What can you do to solve for R? Pythagorean theorem, all right. Let me give you a quick minute, see what you come up with. So are there questions so far? Is everybody set up in the same place? I like the way you're working in color highlights the pictures. Would you like to put yours on the board? Yes, you may. Sure, just help, help yourself. All right, 
So talk to us, tell us what you're setting up. Um, it's the Pythagorean theorem because this one's a right triangle and that's the hypotenuse, so you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Alright, then what? Um, and then I just squared them, so 6 squared is 36, and then you foil r minus 2, and that's r squared minus 4r plus 4 equals r squared. Lovely. And then uh, these are both numbers, so that you can add them to get 40. And there's r squared on both sides, so you subtract r squared and it cancels. And so 40 minus 4r equals 0. And if you get 4r to the other side, that's 40 equals 4r. So r equals 10. Excellent. And very clearly explained. I like the way you did that. Any questions so far? All right. So if the radius was 10, and this was hypothesizing that our lens was best um, shaped along a circular outline or in 3D along the outline of the sphere, all right, so where would the center of the circle be? If we put this on a grid, that might help our conversation. So if we had this on a grid to where we could tell the point 6, 2 was a point on our, on our circle, it would have a radius of how much? 10. 10. All right. That's what we got, the radius of 10. So where is the center of the circle? Uh, 0, 10. Very good. So if the center is going to be at 0, 10 and we have a radius of 10, what would be the equation of the circle that would model this, the lens being having a spherical shape? Who's going to volunteer? Mackenzie? Um, x squared plus y minus 10 squared equals 100. Perfect. Are we all caught up? Yes. Um, I'm wondering where you got the center point from. Like, how do you get Good point. Right? Where'd you get the um, center point? Well, I sort of just looked at, but you can, you basically, um, well, you know the radius is n, and if you have the axis, you see that it's on zero point. Right. That's why I put the axes in there a little belatedly, but I put the axes in. So here's the origin. And the radius was 10, then with the circle touching the origin, you go up a radius of 10, you wind up at 10 on the y-axis. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Then, how would you be able to type this into your calculator? It's not set up in the right form to just type it in, is it? All right, so let's do a little bit of undoing. Solve for y. Take a minute. Solve for y so we can type this in on our y equals. good undoing. We can't type in the plus or the minus. Can you tell the difference in the circle for the shape of this lens, which one do we need, the plus or the minus? I would think the minus because why? it goes down. Not Excellent. Down. Great. So we're going to type in on y equals y1 equals 10 minus the square root of, right? 
take a minute and do that. We're going to set up our viewing window to be the same as our lens. Yes. Why was it minus instead of plus? Aaron, why did you use the minus instead of the plus? We used the minus because if you look in the original picture, the cir the part of the circle that we're looking at goes down, not up. So it's the negative half of the circle. You have the bottom half. Look at the beginning wording. It says y is y equals. The y direction is vertical, up, down. So your question is, do you want the upper part or the bottom part? And because we're showing in this picture, the bottom part of the circle, we want the y minus. We want that minus part. Very good. So let me focus this a little bit and let's see. Is everybody okay typing in their equation? All right, let's set up our viewing window before we graph this. We want our window to look similar to our viewing lens where our x, if our diameter was 12, we want to go from, and we're centering this, we want to go from negative 6 to 6 on the x-axis. And since we know we need to go as high as 2 for our lens, let's go from negative 2 to 2 on the y. All right, so that if we graph this, we should see something that simulates our, the lens we're looking at. Question so far? All right, is everybody caught up? All right. So then, our question is, is this the best equation that models our lens, or is there maybe another model out there? And several of you brought up that a parabola or an ellipse might be, also be a good fit. Okay? Can we... Do we have any questions before we move on to another model? Okay? All right. So good job here. Let's try a different model. What is the equation of a parabola? We've got y equals what? Yes, Mackenzie? You know the vertex okay. form of one. Oh, We've had X several minus forms. H squared. All right, x minus h a. squared a times. A. Good. The stretch factor or the concavity, x minus h squared plus k. Tell me about h and k. What are those? Um, h and k are the x y coordinates. Very good. X and y coordinates of the vertex. In our case, where's the vertex? 